These promises strong as a spell I'll never tell Hi guys, welcome back to Exmo Lex. First of all, a huge thank you to anybody who watched last week's video all the way through or left a comment. It genuinely made a huge difference in how many people that video reached. Like, it did better than the majority of all of my recent content. I appreciate your help with that so much, so if it's not too much trouble again this week, please watch the video all the way through to the end and leave a comment. It helps boost the video and the algorithm so more people see it, and I appreciate that so much. It's been a minute since I've done a video about the LDS Church and the Bite Model, but just as a reminder, this is a continuing series. This video will be added to the playlist, so check out all the other videos if you haven't already. The Bite Model was created by cult expert Stephen Hassan to help us determine whether or not a group is a cult. It's important to be able to distinguish what is truly cult-like and what isn't, because if you're just going off of the dictionary definition, it's a very broad definition. So narrowing it down is really helpful in understanding what a cult really is. BITE stands for Behavior Control, Information Control, Thought Control, and Emotional Control. And today we'll be examining a point under Behavior Control. If you want to learn more about the BITE model in general, I will leave links for that in the description. But for now, let's get started. Our point under Behavior Control is instill or promote dependence and obedience. If you were ever a member of the Mormon Church, I think you'll agree that's a huge part of how the church operates especially instilling obedience. From the time you're a toddler in the church, you are singing songs, you are reading scriptures, and quoting LDS leaders telling you to follow and obey the words of the prophet. It would take ages to go over every single quote the church has about obedience. It would be a massive list. There are entire talks often given in general conference just about obedience. In fact, here is a list of just a few talks devoted to this topic. Obedience Brings Blessings by Prophet Thomas S. Monson. Obedience, The Path to Freedom by Apostle James E. Faust. Obedience, Full Obedience by Apostle Teddy E. Brewerton. Faith Obedience by Apostle R. Conrad Schultz. Obedience to the Prophets by Apostle Claudio R. M. Costa. That's just to name a few. Like, it's funny because I'm sure they have to come up with different titles for the talk, but they all have to be like obedience this, obedience that, faithful obedience full obedience, <laughs> obedience to the prophet, obedience to God. So many obedience talks. And here are just a couple quotes. Faithfulness in obeying the commandments and keeping our covenants will protect us from being deceived, Apostle Robert D. Hales. On a personal note, I would contest that. When I was what they would call deceived, I was being the most obedient that I ever had in my life. The living prophet in the first presidency, follow them and be blessed, reject them and suffer. Prophet Ezra Taft Benson, reject them and suffer. They're pretty serious about this whole obedience thing. And here are a few lines from songs that we sang as children in the LDS church. Pioneer children were quick to obey. When Heavenly Father speaks to me through parents or prophets or in quiet ways, I want to listen and follow in faith. I will always obey. I will follow God's plan for me. Follow the prophet, follow the prophet, follow the prophet, don't go astray. And for good measure, just in case all of this didn't make my case enough, here is a real quick montage of obedience quotes made into cute little inspirational quote pictures, all generated as propaganda by the church or its members. Roll the tape. Obedience, obedience, obedience. Now let's move on to dependence. Are the members conditioned to be dependent upon the church? I think yes, in a couple different ways. When we think of dependence, we often think of financial dependence. And I think in some cases this does apply. For example, the church sometimes will help out members of the church with food or bills if they are struggling, but only if they are active and paying tithing to the church, which is like, a little bit ridiculous, like we have hundreds of billions of dollars, but if you want us to help you, you have to be giving us 10% of your income. Obviously this does not apply to every member of the church. Not everybody is struggling financially or in a place where they need to be dependent on the church for food or help with bills. So financial dependence only applies in some cases. However, I do think that the majority of church members are dependent on the church in other ways. When I left the church, I lost my community because I depended on the church for community. Christmas parties, relief society activities, weekly meetings, friendships. My whole family are church members, so I was worried about losing them too. I also felt like I lost my parenting base because I depended on the church for my life plan. The church had assigned me this path for how I was going to live my life. 
get baptized, get married in the temple, have kids, raise those kids in the church. So when I first left the church, I literally didn't know what I was going to do with my life. The church was so central to who I was as a person. It was so central to my life's purpose that my whole life was turned upside down without it. And I don't think that's unusual. If you are orthodox, if you are deeply committed to this religion, this faith, leaving it is scary because you're dependent on it in so many ways. And that's just something that comes from being so deeply committed to something that is created to be the whole purpose of your existence from before you're born all the way through the afterlife. So as I hope I've demonstrated, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints absolutely does promote dependence and obedience. But remember that hitting one point on the bite model does not necessarily make a group a cult. So check out the other videos in this playlist and let me know in the comments if you think I'm right or if you think I'm wrong about any of them. Now we're coming to like the credits portion of the video, but please stay through all the way till the end to help this video be seen by more people. Huge thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. You guys are the best and extra special thank you to Craig Call, Doug Davis, Tans, and the Exmo Candle Co. for supporting at the Demon Tier on my Patreon. Today's patron of the day is Marie Harris. Marie is a patron at the Apostate Tier and has been a patron for 19 months. Marie, thank you for your support. I appreciate it so much. If you would like to support the channel, there are links to do so in the description below, as well as other links to see all my other content. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Just as strong as a spell, I'll never tell. Yeah, I like you, that's for sure. Never have to close the door. Been a long time, a year before. And I'm missing you.